68% overall received at least one prescription just in 2009, so that's just in a one-year time period. And about 20% got five or more different types of prescriptions within that same time period. It is comparable to other statistics throughout the United States that people are receiving this number of prescriptions. And as you get older, you get more and more prescriptions, and women tend to get more prescriptions than men. So the, the most common prescriptions in our community in this time frame were first penicillins, which you might expect as people get infections, they often get prescribed a, an antibiotic and penicillins are very common. But the other two that were extremely common in our community were uh, antidepressants and uh, opioid analgesics, and that was a little bit surprising. So overall, women got more antidepressant prescriptions than men, and uh, it increased with increasing age. And by the time we got to women who were 50 to 64 years of age in 2009, nearly one in four women got a prescription for an antidepressant in that age category. You know, often when people talk about the most common chronic conditions in a the community, they're talking about things like heart disease and diabetes. Well, the second most common prescription in our community was for antidepressants. And so that does suggest that mental health conditions are a huge issue in our community and is maybe an area that we should really focus on. In the youngest population, the most common prescriptions were vaccines and anti antibiotics and also anti-asthmatic medications. And that tends to shift as people get older. So by the time you're 65 years of age and older, you tend to be taking medications for heart-related conditions. So things like anti-hyperlipidemia drugs for high cholesterol and beta blockers and diuretics, all of those things are associated with heart conditions. It's a very descriptive study, so it's really to establish kind of a baseline picture of what's going on in our population, and it gives us information as to some of the prescribing practices in our community. And we can follow this up then year by year to see how those patterns change over time. And if we see sharp spikes or changes in different types of prescriptions, that can signal either um, uh, new conditions that we might need to focus in on for more effective control or possibly are there concerns related to some of those prescriptions. Uh, also, our, our data are really useful for comparing our population to other communities throughout the country. So, you know, does, do, does our practice and do the practices that participate in the Rochester Epi Project, do they tend to look like practices throughout the country? And that can offer um, clues as to how practice, uh, clues as to practice pattern variation throughout the community and throughout the country.